Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Like to thank brother um, Saif for introducing me, uh, Ikna Social Justice for inviting us to share with you uh, for these few minutes the story or some insights of the history of Muslims in America. But before I go there, you know, because we're Muslims and we all read the Quran, I, um, to put it in the context, I'd like to say, uh, I'd like to talk about the story of Musa in the Quran when um, Musa's uh, mother had the vision and she put um, her child in, in the water, you know, in the boat, um, wood, whatever you want to call it, and he went, he immigrated and wound up in the house of Pharaoh. And then you also have the story in the Quran of Yusuf. I mean, he, he got kidnapped, robbed, and thrown in a well, but wound up in the house of Pharaoh. So, both, so you have the same experience in America. The African Americans or the West Africans were brought here and enslaved. Some of the Indians was brought here and enslaved. Then you had the other immigrants, Muslims, that came here seeking a better way. So what I want to share with is our inner links. One of the things that Safe uh, suggested to me earlier, he said use the word change or, or link, and at first I rejected that. But now I just embraced that because a link and a chain is just what we want to build. Chains of relationships, links of relationships. So I'm going to try to be within my 10 minutes. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And I'm going to try to read. I don't normally read. Um, Muslims in America first came here as explorers, as the travelers of the West African, Abu Bakr, the brother Mansa Musa, sellers from North Africa, Morocco, Algiers, Libya, Muscat, um, more Spain to the point that you hear in this marine songs from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, the sword that they carried, the saber they get, got when they conquered Algiers. Um, next, Muslims came from the Spanish Inquisition and the Barbary Coast Wars, the pirates and everything, out of the first 10 international countries um, that uh, signed peace treaties with the United States, five was Muslim country. Morocco was the first country to acknowledge America's freedom and independence. Libya, Muscat, Oman, and Algiers rounded out the 10 international peace treaties. Um, then you had, after the Barbary Coast War came, you had the, the African diaspora, which we know in American history as the West African slave trade. By the early to mid-1800s, we start hearing and reading stories about Muslim personalities as leaders, as scholars, entrepreneurs, Muslims such as Bilali Muhammad and Sali Bilali out of Sapo Island, St. Simon Island out, out of Georgia, which is well documented. You got Yarl Mahmoud, um, who was a famous uh, swimmer. He owned a hauling business. Um, you saw his entrepreneurship skills right in Georgetown. You got Ibrahim Abdul Rahman. Um, who was enslaved was a prince. You got Umar ibn Zahid, who was a scholar. You got the camel herder, Haj Ali. You know, in America, you know, I, I grew up as a cow watching cowboys and Indians. So Muslims in America are not cowboys, they was camel boys. And you can see this history and documented that there's at least three Muslims that brought over here 75 camels and went out west, and Haj Ali was one of them. By the mid to late 1800s, you start seeing towns with Islamic names being established, such as Muhammad, Illinois, Muhammad, Texas, Mecca, Indiana, just to name a few. You also see from the mid to late 1800s various waves of Muslims coming from the Lebanese diaspora, and you see them all throughout South America, Canada, all throughout the um, United States. You have Muslims that's coming from the Indian subcontinent and their diaspora all throughout. You hear uh, even um, Imam Faisal Khan, I see him back there, he's talking about how they used to call him the Fulas in, the Guy in Guyana. Um, then, you got, um, then you got Americans coming in, up, you can find it in that inner link in Canada. One of the things that I find in this period that I was touched my heart in America, we found two Bilal's as leaders. You know, we know in Islamic history we had Bilal ibn Rabah during Prophet Muhammad time, Saudi Islam. And we know that when he converted to Islam, he was tortured by his slave master. And he maintained that consciousness of one God. And all he, when he first used to say, oh, how, to, how I couldn't say that no more, put up the one finger. Well, in America, in between two Bilal's, we got two Bilal's leaders. The first imam in America, his name was Bilali Muhammad. You see his rasala, instructing how to pray, how to, when the best time to call the Adan. We find a one tombstone with the one finger on it. We find these tombstones from Florida all the way up to Canada, all the way out west to Kansas. And this is not just only African-American experience. We found them in Mecca, Indiana, uh, 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 Muhammad, Illinois, out of Muslims that came from Albania and those areas. Now in the 1900s and 1920s, launched the Muslim personalities or people with Islamic ideas and concepts. You know, I'm a, I'm a historian, not a politician. So anybody say they're the Muslims and develop a community, we identify, we uh, uh, cover their histories. From the 1900s to 1920s, such people like Muhammad Alexander, 
Alexander Russell Webb, Noble Drew Ali, Muhammad Dusi Ali, Muti Muhammad Sadiqi, the Sudanese Sadiqi Muhammad, communities and people from Yemen, Albania, Poland, Syria, and Turkey. Two other lesser known personalities that I'd like to point out is one was Muhammad Asa Abu Huar, who arrived in the United States in 1903, lived in the DC area, became a successful developer, and later de uh, developed and built the Islamic Center that we know today. Another Muslim personality that I'd like to talk about during that period, his name was Hassan Muhammad. He came here in 1911 from Lebanon, a Shiite Muslim. Became a businessman who lived and owned a business in Benzalni, Mississippi. And one of his sons, Ali Muhammad, became a state senator in the 18 and early 1900s. The Polish Tartars established the first Islamic organization listed in 1907 in Brooklyn, New York. The Morris Science Temple, 1913. In 1919, Highland Park Islamic Association. In 1920, the Red Crescent in Detroit. 1921, the Albanian uh, uh, Ahmadian Muslim community. And in 1928, Sheikh Imam Dawood, the Islamic um, uh, propagation uh, community in Brooklyn, New York. During the 1900s to the 1920s, various communities started opening up massages and centers. The first was in 1915 in Bridgeport, uh, Maine, under the leadership of the Albanians in a, in a, a preparatory mill. It was a factory that they made a place that they could make, have Jumar. And in 1919 in Connecticut, the first known masjid built in the United States was done in 1921. It was knocked down in 1926 in Highland Park, Detroit, Michigan. Um, which they call the Ford plant. You'll hear this many stories talk about the Ford plant. In 1926, the Polish Tartars opened a masjid in Brooklyn. In 1928, African Americans in Pittsburgh um, opened a masjid, established one of the first masjids uh, in, in Pittsburgh. Sheikh Daoud of Brooklyn in, 19, and, and in 1929, Muslims from Syria and Ross, North Dakota established a masjid. We've been part of the American fabric all throughout since the inceptions of America. We fought in all American wars, from the Revolutionary War to the Civil War to the um, World War I, World War II. Matter of fact, in World War I, there was 550 people that had the last name Muhammad, spelled 41 different ways. Once I saw that it was 41 different ways, I learned that, look, there's got, we got to be some flexibility. In the 1930s and the 1950s, ushered in Muslim personalities or people with Islamic ideas and concepts, communities, and organizations such as Wallace D. Farad Muhammad from 1930 to 1933, Elijah Muhammad 1933 to 1975, Imam Wali Akram 1934, Cleveland, and Ohio 1938 to 1957, Imam Sheikh Professor Muhammad Ezzeldin, Imam Sheikh Dawood, and other Muslim personalities from the 1930s to the 1940s, like Amin Ghani, uh, Saeed Akmal, Nasser Ahmed, Dr. Abdul Suleiman, Ishmael Sama, and many jazz artists like Art Blakely, uh, McCoy Tyler, and others. In the 1934, the longest standing master in the United States was built in Cedar Rapids. It was built in 1934. Okay, inshallah, I'm going to break it down. i got three minutes, inshallah. So I'm going to jump into, uh, and there's other masters that was established um, during that period. 1960s, 1970s, um, ushered in Muslim communities, personalities and organizations like personalities like Muhammad, Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, that became world-known personalities. Children today are being named after Muhammad Ali because of their dignity and strength to stand up for oneness and their belief in God. Uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Imam Worthy Muhammad, and others. In 1960, Master Muhammad of Washington, D.C. was built. In 1962, uh, Muhammad Speaks Newspapers was launched. In 1962, Dar es Salaam was established under the leadership of Imam Yahya, Abdul Kareem, Ishaq Shahid, and Raja Mahmoud. In 1963, MSA, the Muslim Student Association, was established. In 1967, the Ansarullah community, under the leadership of uh, Isar al Haj Mahdi, was established. 1968, the Hanif movement of Washington, D.C., was established. 41 years ago, in 1968, Islamic Society of North America was established. In 1975, Imam Muhammad um, took over the leadership of the Nation of Islam. That's when the largest Muslim uh, African American indigenous community formed a community. I just want to bring out two points in, in my closing to remind us, you know, to me, as I looked in here, you know, over 40 years ago when I was a Muslim um, in the Connecticut area, there was very few Muslims. But today, remind me, there's a surah al nasr When Allah says, when comes the help of Allah and the victory, and thou doest see the people enter the Allah's religion in crowds. I see Muslim crowds. 
and, and celebrate the praises of thy Lord and, and pray for, the for, for his forgiveness for he's all forgiven and most gracious. You know, Allah has reminded us that he made us tribes and nations not to despise one another but get to know one another. In Connecticut, it allow, in, in the United States, in America, it allows us to come together and connect. And this is my closing remark, is that October in, United, in Washington, D.C. is celebrated as Islamic Heritage Month. In Canada, all throughout Canada, it is celebrated as Islamic Heritage Month. In Canada, we need to start telling our stories. You, we get October celebrated, the different schools, I'm looking at the schools in D.C. that start teaching about Ramadan and Islam, that will make them become more aware of our contribution and our heritage. So, and then some of the things that people that think, events that happened in October, Alexander, uh, October the 1st, Alexander Russell Webb passed away. Um, in 1916, October the 10th, the 4th, 1943, Imam Jamil El Amin was born. Uh, October the 7th, Elijah, 19, 1897, Elijah Muhammad was born. October the 10th, 1828, Abdul Rahman, a prince among slaves, wrote his, once, once he got his freedom, wrote his first Arabic letter talking about he came from Timbuktu. That was written in October 1828. Uh, um, October the 14th, 1866, Professor Ezzeldin Ali Muhammad Bey was born. October the 30th, Imam Worthy Muhammad was born. So many Muslim personalities that come into American experience was born in October. This is why I encourage us to celebrate American story. This is my last comment. I invite you all, I encourage you all, develop and tell your story and, she, and your organization's story. Share that history, share your contribution with photos, artifacts, and documents, and oral histories. Inshallah, by the late by late 2021, we'll be opening up a new museum that will have 7,000 square feet of space. We'd like to be able to tell your stories. This is, your story is an American story. The only way we're going to be able to develop it is if you bring and share your story through artifacts, photographs, oral history. Document your stories. I want to thank you. I mean, Allah increase our faith, increase our consciousness, increase our love for him, and may his light shine throughout all our communities. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.